Okay, we're currently in section 9.1, and uh, I wanted to finish up that section here. Now, um, I in the last video I had uh, I had left off with um, with uh, talking about uh, uh, situations with using absolute value bars. So, um, uh, if if in the problems they just said simplify and you're working with a variable, uh, pay attention to the fact that the square root of something squared is going to be that something, whatever it is, x. Okay, but we we can't we can't ever have a negative coming out of the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the square root calculation. Okay, like like if I ask you the square root of nine, that is that is not negative three, right? That's that's positive three. Um, and so, but for many of the problems in the book, we're going to assume that all the variables represent non-negative numbers. Okay, and whenever those words are mentioned, you don't have to bother with absolute value bars in the answer. Uh, let's take a look at problem six. Simplify and assume that all variables represent non-negative numbers. Okay, so the square root of 16x squared. Well, I so the plan here with a lot of this is to rewrite a square root calculation as the square root of something squared, because the radical and the power of two will offset each other, and you know those those two symbols will go away, leaving you with the item that you're squaring underneath the radical. Uh, so in this case, uh, I know 4 squared is 16. When I square x, I get x squared. So when I square 4x, I get 16x squared. Uh, the square root of 4x, the quantity squared, would be just 4x then. Now, if they did not say assume all variables represent non-negative numbers, I would need to have absolute value bars around the 4x. Okay? If I did not have the absolute value bars, it would be a wrong answer. Okay, but the fact that they're telling me assume that x, you know, the variable is not a negative, I actually don't need those. Okay. Um, here's uh, part b. Okay, the square root of a to the 18th times b to the 6th. Well, I want to rewrite the radicand as something squared. That way the radical and the power of 2 will go away. A to the ninth squared, that'd be A to the 18th, I'd be just multiplying the powers there. B cubed squared would be B to the sixth. Okay, so the square root and the power of two are gonna go away now, leaving me with just A to the ninth B cubed then. Uh, part C, okay, the fourth root of X to the 44th. Well, when you have a square root, you wanna rewrite the radicand as something that's squared. Um, when it's a fourth root, you want to rewrite the radicand as something to the fourth power. Okay, the index and the power will then cancel each other. So x to the eleventh to the fourth would be x to the forty-fourth. Um, but the index and the power of four match here, so those go away, going to leave me with just x to the eleventh. Uh, how about the cubed root of 125 x to the ninth? So I'd want to rewrite that as the cubed root of something cubed. Well, I know 5 cubed would give me 125. x cubed cubed would give me x to the ninth. So 5x cubed cubed would give me 125x to the ninth. Since that index of 3 and that power of 3 are the same, those go away for me, and I'm left with 5x cubed then as the answer. Okay, problem seven, uh, simplify the square root of x, x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay, and we're also going to assume that x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So we have already done that problem over here. Uh, of course, I can't split this radical into 3. Uh, I, can't, I can't ever split a radical unless I'm multiplying or dividing the inner terms, not ever if I'm adding or subtracting. So I wouldn't want to think of the problem like that. But um, this will, uh, x squared plus 6x plus 9 is going to factor nicely as x plus 3 times x plus 3, or x plus 3 squared. And that's how I'd want to think of this, because the square root of an expression squared is just going to leave you with that expression, uh, which for us is x plus 3. Now, I would normally have absolute value bars around that expression if it just said simplify, as was the case up here. And, but in this problem, I'm assuming that x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay, now what that means to us 
is that I can lose the absolute value bars. Like if I already know that x is some number that is not going to be less than negative 3, there is no way that x plus 3 is ever going to be a negative. Okay, so this statement here is just simply a way to say, hey, when you do this calculation, you actually don't need absolute value bars, okay, since this is the condition on x. Uh, here's uh, two statements next. When you multiply radicals, uh, as long as the uh, index is the same, you can combine them to a single radical by multiplying the inner terms. Same thing with division. As long as the index is the same, you can, uh, you, you can combine that to a single radical by dividing the inner terms. Now, you can't ever do this if you're adding or subtracting radicals. Okay, be careful about that. Only if you're multiplying or dividing, you can form a single radical. Uh, so let's take a look at um, problem 8 here. Uh, we're going to simplify and assume that all variables represent non-negative numbers. Okay, so we don't have to worry about absolute value bars. Uh, in any of this is what they're saying. Okay, part A, the square root of 2 times the square root of 18. Well, I don't know the square root of 2 or the square root of 18 off the top of my head because those are not going to result in nice counting number values. But if I combine these to a single radical by multiplying the inner terms, I know 2 times 18 is 36, and uh, the square root of 36 is 6. Okay, so the square root of 2 times the square root of 18, that would be 6. Uh, over here, I'm multiplying radicals, and the index is the same, so I can combine that. I, I, and I don't know the cube root of 32 or the cube root of 2 off the top of my head. Those would be infinite decimals. Okay, they're not nice counting number values. And uh, uh, I, I'm looking for the exact answer, right, not infinite decimals. Uh, so, But I can combine this to a single radical by multiplying the inner terms. 32 times 2 is 64, and the cube root of 64 is 4. Uh, 4 times 4 times 4, that's 64. Okay, here's another one. 3 times the square root of 6 times 8 times the square root of 6. Well, 3 times 8 is 24. Uh, the square root of 6 times the square root of 6, that would be the square root of 36, which I know is 6. So all I have to do here is take 24 times 6, which would be 144. Part D, uh, the square root of 45n times the square root of 5n. Well, I don't know the square root of 45, I don't know the square root of 5, okay. So the plan is going to be to combine these like we did over, you know, on these other ones. Uh, 45 times 5 is 225. n times n is n squared. The square root of 225 would be 15, since 15 times 15 is 225. And then the square root of n squared would be n. I'm assuming that n is not a negative. Okay, if they didn't tell me that, I'd need absolute value bars. But uh, 15n would be my answer then. Here's uh, some division ones. So the square root of 80 over the square root of 5. Well, I don't know what the square root of 80 or the square root of 5 are, okay, because those are not going to be nice, nice counting number values. But I can combine this to a single radical by dividing the, uh, the inner terms there. 80 over 5 is 16, and the square root of 16 is 4. So 4 would be the answer. Okay, uh, here's another one. The cube root of 40b to the 7th over the cube root of 5b to the 4th. Well, if I combine those to a single radical, 40 over 5 is 8. b to the 7th over b to the 4th. Well, I can cancel these 4b's with part of these 7b's and have 3b's left. Okay, b cubed. The cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of b cubed would be b, so 2b would be my answer there. Um, problem 9, there's a couple of these in the book, not a lot, but maybe maybe two or three. Find the missing number for the, the question mark here in the statement. Okay, um, so what they want you to see here is a couple of things. First of all, 7 is the resulting output, okay, and we know the square root of 49 is 7. Uh, I also know that if I'm dividing square roots, I can combine that to a single square root. So I've got the square root of question mark over 8, which has to be equal to the square root of 49 because I know the square root of 49 is 7. Okay, so the problem here 
is what does the question mark need to be in order for that number divided by 8 to be equal to 49? Well, uh, if I multiply both sides by 8, 49 times 8 is 392. So if you take 392 divided by 8, that would be 49. And the square root of 49 is 7. Uh, so the value of that question mark there would be 392. Okay, here's a definition on the next page. A radical function is a function that involves radicals. Uh, so we talked about function notation in the last chapter there. Suppose that we have this function f of x. Okay, and I want us to find f of 12, f of negative 3, and f of 0. f of 12 means that I would just replace x with 12 and then simplify. Okay, so I'm doing that. Uh, 3 times 12 is 36, plus 13 is 49. And now the square root of 49 is 7. I've still got the plus 33 here. 7 plus 33 is 40, so 40 would be my answer. Okay, how about f of negative 3? Well, I'd replace x with negative 3 and simplify. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, plus 13 is 4. Uh, the square root of 4 I know is 2, right? And of course I have the plus 33 still. 2 plus 33 is 35. That'd be the answer. Okay, how about uh, f of 0? Uh, so if I replace x with 0, then I've got the square root of 13 plus 33. Now the square root of 13 is not going to be a nice counting number value like we saw in these other two problems. And so the intent of this one would be to use a calculator, okay? Um, and uh, if I use uh, this uh, TI-30 model here, um, okay, turn it on, and we want the square root, uh, whoops, uh, the square root of 13.0, I didn't want that, my parentheses there, okay, um, and then plus uh, 33, Okay, I'm getting 36.606 if I go nearest three digits on that. Okay, it says round to the nearest thousands if necessary. That'd be nearest three digits. All right. Um, now, if they were looking for the exact answer, of course, I would leave my answer as the square root of 13 plus 33. I wouldn't do anything with the calculator and decimals here. Um, Problem 11 is the last one in the section. Uh, we want to find the domain of each radical function. Write your answer using interval notation. Okay, now I know that the square root of a negative is not a real number. All right, so when it comes to domain, I want the overall expression underneath a square root not to be a negative. So in this problem, x plus 4 is underneath the square root. I want that not to be a negative, which means I'd want to set that to be greater than or equal to 0. Uh, subtract 4 from both sides. So it looks like anything that is negative 4 or bigger would be okay. Anything less than negative 4, we don't want that because now we've got a negative overall number underneath the square root. Uh, so using interval notation, negative 4 to infinity would be my answer there. Make sure you got a bracket by negative 4. If, if x is negative 4, uh, we've got the square root of 0, which would be 0. Okay, we just don't want anything less than negative 4 is, is the problem. Uh, how about this one? So find the domain uh, of f of x. Well, uh, um, same deal. I, I, I want uh, uh, the expression underneath the square root not to be a negative. So I'm going to set up a, like a side calculation here. 4 minus 3x can't be negative, which means I want to set that to be greater than or equal to 0. And uh, if you add 3x and then divide by 3, it looks like anything less than or equal to 4 thirds is going to be okay to use. Anything bigger than 4 thirds, we don't want that because then we'll, we'll end up getting a negative underneath the square root sign. The square root of a negative is not a real number. By the way, notice how in this problem, the plus 2 is not relevant to anything in, in, the, uh, in the problem of uh, finding the domain. Okay, it's all about what's underneath the square root. Uh, part C, okay, 
uh, f of x equal the fourth root of 3x plus 8 plus 7. Well, the fourth root of a negative is not a real number. So even though I've got a fourth root and not a square root, like this problem would be handled like the other two, in that I'd want the expression underneath the radical not to be a negative. So I've set that up, 3x plus 8 is greater than or equal to 0, since I don't want that to be a negative. Uh, subtract 8, divide by 3, so it looks like anything that is greater than or equal to negative 8 thirds would be okay to use. Uh, anything less than negative 8 thirds, we don't want that because that, then that'll actually form a negative underneath the fourth root, and we, the fourth root of, of a negative is not a real number. Okay, now over here, you'll notice that I don't have any calculation. I just went uh, to the answer and I said all real numbers. Well, the reason I can do that is because uh, uh, the uh, uh, cube root of a negative is, uh, is just another negative, right? Like if I ask, here's the problem that we did earlier, the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. There's no, there's no problem with having a negative underneath a cube root, right? It's just if you have uh, an even index, okay, or, or, or a square root, uh, the square root of a negative is not a real number. The fourth root of a negative is not a real number. The cube root of a negative, that is a real number. That's going to be a neg another negative. Uh, the fifth root of a negative, that's another negative, right? So it's all about the index here. Um, since 16x minus 409 can be positive or negative or zero, we don't care. It can be anything. We don't care. All real numbers are okay there for x. Okay, so it's all about the index here in these props. And again, the, you know, the plus 38, not relevant to anything that we're doing. Okay, the plus 7, not relevant to anything. It's all about the radical that we see in the problem. All right, uh, we're now done with 9.1, and uh, so be sure to look at the homework problems that are there on page uh, 696 for me, uh, the odd-numbered ones.